This LOS is calculate and interpret a holding period return, total return. Okay, for an investment that makes one cash payment at the end of the holding period, uh, the holding period return is the ending price minus the beginning price plus any cash flows that we receive, for example, like a dividend, okay, divided by the beginning price. When, where uh, P0 is the initial investment, P1 is the price received at the end of the holding period, and D1 is the cash paid by the investment at the end of the holding period. So that's, we receive a dividend and, a, uh, and we sell, for example, uh, if we're using stocks, we receive a dividend and we sell the stock at the end of the period, okay? So this is important because if we flash forward to uh, portfolio risk and return part one, uh, you can see that uh, we also have to calculate and interpret major return measures and describe their appropriate uses, okay? So this is uh, typical of the CFA, you learn something in quant, and then you apply it later on in another section, say corporate finance, or in the uh, portfolio management section, okay? So here, a holding period return is the return expected from holding an asset, single period of time. The period may be one day, one week, one month, five years, or any specified period. So again, this is not an annual return, it's a holding period return, and the time period may be different. So the, this is just a different nomenclature here. You can see T is time in the future, P uh, minus T minus one, uh, plus the DT over uh, P T minus one. So just sometimes we see different formats uh, saying the same thing in the CFA. Don't get confused by that. Or here I just wrote it out in words, ending price minus beginning price plus dividends divided by the beginning price. Now this slide is just adding a little bit, uh, some new information, which is a bit of a wrinkle. If we're given, for example, three annual returns, so we have a return for year one, year two, year three, and we want to calculate what the holding period return is, uh, given three returns, then what we're going to do is we're going to compound the three annual returns. So how do we do that? It's uh, one plus the return uh, one times one plus the return two times one plus the return three minus one. So most holding period returns are reported as daily, monthly, or annual returns. So here's just a quick example to illustrate that, that what is the three-year holding period return if the annual returns are 7%, 9%, and minus 5%. So as we said, we compound the returns. So it's one plus return one times one plus return two times one plus return three. So 1.07 times 1.09 times 0.95, and that's minus one is gonna give us 0 0.1080, which is 10.8%. So let's just do that on the calculator very quickly. One point, uh, sorry, there's a bit of rounding, so I just wanna show you 1.07 times 1.09 times 0.95 equals minus one. And if we wanna multiply that by 100, to give us, uh, we can write it out as percentage, 10.79850, uh, closest to 10.8%.